In today's video, we're going to talk about successful planning a group ride. How do you plan a group ride? You know, riding with groups got a lot of good things that come with it, like the camaraderie you have with riding with groups, the brother and sisterhood that you get riding with people, and safeties in numbers. And there are some not so good with riding with groups, like riding with someone you never rode with before, especially if you haven't planned this group ride. Hey everybody, welcome to Boots and Jeans Riders. I am Rich. I'm Kate. And we're gonna go over what we do to have successful group riding. Right. So if you're talking about planning your group riding, you've been on a couple of group rides and you kind of, they went well, some of them didn't, didn't go so well. Mm -hmm. We're gonna give you some tips and pointers of what we do, our thought process in planning group rides. And we have right. planned many, many successful group many rides. So we're gonna jump in with it. I mean, like we said, there's some good and bad about riding with groups. And you just didn't really want to know what to do, how can you plan a successful group ride. You got to watch the entire video. Exactly. Now, the easiest way we would say to plan a group ride is just to pick up the phone. And call a few people. Come on, let's go on a ride. Yep. That's not how we plan ours. That, that's just the easiest way to do it. And especially the people that you know, right. then no big deal. But you know, you want people to, some new people to come in a group or somebody told you about a friend that want to ride with groups or you have a lot of people that you would like to ride with. It depends on what you consider a big group or a small group or the optimal number. I say around seven to 10. And sometimes we put out the messages and we get 20 show up. Right. And we're gonna show you how we get people ready to have us a group ride. Exactly. Now the first thing we do, we kind of do our different than any, a lot of other people. We pick our destination first. Yes. We always pick the destination first because if we pick the date first, what happens when that date come and we didn't check the weather or whatever may happen, you can't go on that ride. At least you can right. have that destination once you finish planning a ride destination. for a different date. Right. So we do that first. And the next thing we do is, let's say we have a ride coming that's two weeks out. What you want to do is easy. You check the weather and then you can get that particular date. But wait, do not send that date out to nobody and say, hey, we got a ride planning coming up on this particular date. Oh, no. We're going to tell you how we do this. And you save that kind of later for it. Okay. The next thing we do, once we got our destination. Right. And we really don't worry about the date yet, but we actually try to do a pre-ride. Pre-ride. Go ahead. And what we do when we do on the pre-ride, we're, what we're looking for is the road condition. The type of road it is. Yes. And another route. Maybe there's three different routes to getting to that place. We might ride one route up to the place or or ride back down to see which one will be best to go with. Now, when we do our pre rides, well, I can't say we do pre rides for every trip that we plan because no. if it's a super long trip, you know, maybe a 400 mile yeah, round trip. We don't want to go out 200 miles and just do a pre-ride. No, we do a, we don't do pre-rides for weekends, like if we're going to stay overnight somewhere. No, no. we don't do the no. pre-rides for that. But if we're doing some to a location and coming right back, yes. Yeah. And one thing in this video I want, want to let you guys know, it has nothing to do with road captains, even though we take the road captain position and we take three road captain courses with three different organizations before. Right. But it's not a road captain video. Just just you out as the regular average rider having fun, want to start doing your own group ride. Mm -hmm. Want to put that in there before we go on. Right. Now, how do we select who's going to go on this trip? Now, if, if for some reason you blast it on social media, mm -hmm. <laughs> then like Kate was saying, some of the bad things are going to happen. You're going to get riders that you know nothing about their skill level and they might not be able to ride on that particular trip. You got a rider that have some serious, serious bad habits. This is why we kind of skeptical about going on rides with groups that we have never met. Although we do it and we love it and they're fun. Right. But you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be careful with people just blasting it on social media. So we very, I don't think we ever done one on social media. Huh? No, we haven't. We, we never so put we, one we, out on social media. We may have put a flyer for some other groups and yes. support 
yes. of that group that's that's doing something, but we never put our hours out on social media, no. So how do we select rides? We do an email list. So if you want to get on our email list, if you're going to be in the Northern California Bay Area, let us know by hitting us up on the email. Say, put me on your ride list. Right. Now, if you way out cross country, you know you're not going to make it. You're just being nosy. Come on now. If you want to be on the email list, email us and say, hey, put me on the list. It don't matter where you live at. No, I'm you not. You might be riding down like, okay, they, they're going on this ride. I'm on. Haul ass. Okay. <laughs> Watch your language, girl. <laughs> <laughs> To Northern Cali Bay Area, I'm hook up with Boots and Jeans Rider. Okay, yeah. Matter of mm-hmm. uh, what's his name, came 400 miles to ride with us. He yeah. has to be on the list, but he live in California. Yes. Tony Rado and okay. Aretha, two wheels for fun. You guys seen the video, he came out and surprised mm-hmm. us. Okay, so in this email list, you got to be careful with a couple of things. What we used to do is send out separate lists. The first list would be for people that we know can ride these advanced technical roads. Exactly. And the second one would be for people that just ride from beginner to intermediate. The problem was, when we were sending out the first list, we left a lot of people out who wanted to go on the ride. So now I'm gonna tell you what we put at the end of the email so we can include everybody. Right. So let's talk about what so, we put in the email. How about we just put one of our emails up and they can read the book. So they can see actually what email. we do in the email. Yeah. Okay, I think about that. I, I, I don't know if we way to put it up, but if somebody wanna see one of our emails, just hit us up with an email, and then we are just doing attachment back to you so you can use it as a template. Okay. You don't have to do everything we're doing because there's a lot of people out there experienced with putting rides together, and you can help us out by putting comments in the comment section below. Yes, down there, down So down there. there's a lot of things that we're going to forget. Mm-hmm. Or we, I would say forget. We just may not remember. I guess that's forgetting. That's forgetting. <laughs> so now what goes in your email list? It's one of the things you definitely want to do. What do we talk about? When we put our email out, we want to introduce the ride in a positive, fun way. So, for instance, if we are heading to Yosemite National Park yeah. or a restaurant, wherever we're going, you want, to, you want to get that in your email. You want to pump that ride up. You want to put all your joy about going to that ride in it. So, let's say, for instance, we use Yosemite, for example. Anybody know anything about Yosemite? Mm-hmm. Anything about the grandeur and the beauty of, your, beauty of Yosemite? You just put the park in or location. We're just using your seminar as an example. Right. I would put something in the email list like granite boulders, rocks. I would put waterfalls, streaming rivers. Put all these things People in there. Rock climbing. Rock climbing. Put yes. the beautiful like road in there. You put all these things in there. Say, how would you like to ride or visit under a waterfall? Ride past a Russian river. Beautiful scenic views. You just pumping up that ride to people going, okay, where are we going? Where are we going? And when? You want this is one of the reasons. Person. This is one of the reasons you don't put the date first. No. You getting that that, <laughs> that you getting that excitement no. out of people. They going, okay, when, 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 when? Of course, an email they could easily glance down because we put our date at the bottom, and I'm gonna tell you the reason why. They glance down to see the date, but you want to get them excited. Mm-hmm. If you said stuff like, um, um, what's the name of the big dome? Half, Half dome. dome. Mm-hmm. Uh, riding through Sherwood Forest, riding through, you're getting people excited. And if it was a restaurant, you do the same thing. You talk about the road. The wildlife. <laughs> the wildlife in a restaurant, too. And if it was a restaurant, you're doing the exact same thing. You're talking about the food of the restaurant, the right. serving this up, and, and the road that's getting to the restaurant, and all these things. And with that, we also put in photographs. Oh. Especially especially if you've been to the place and you have a picture of I you think and a photograph. You put that in there. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, what you about to say? I think putting the pictures in there, that's what really get people pumped up to want to go see those pictures in person and see it for themselves. Yes, and if you're a YouTuber, if you're recording anything, what we do also, we put a little, a small snip, snippet of the video that we had from us being on that, like oh, what we done month. with Tale of the Dragon. Yes. Oh, not Tale of the Dragon, the little dragon. California Little Dragon. Yes, we California. let people share just a little bit what they was gonna get. Now, you might be saying, you well, know. that's a lot to put in an email. What's this this is what we do. This is how you plan that, that specialty, that ride to get people excited. Right. A picture speaks a thousand words. Yes. That's uh, they should change it to a million words. <laughs> 
So you're introducing that ride with all the positives you can get in there. And then you put a photograph in there. And the next thing we do in that also, uh, matter of fact, I'm just kind of get forward to at the bottom when we talk about dates. After we put all this in there, we put the when. When. Since you ask, then we put the date in there. Right. And then we put the meetup location and time in that email. Time kick stands up. Now, <laughs> this is important. She knows what I'm about to say. This is very, very important. Yes. If you're planning on going somewhere or leaving at 8 o'clock, there's always, always somebody that's going to be late. That one always or that one whose tank is not full. <laughs> I know. Always. So this is a psychological thing. Yes. If you so, plan on leaving at 8 o'clock, you say kick stands up at, at 8 o'clock, then you guarantee to leave at 8.15. Right. Trust me. So if you want to leave at 8 o'clock, you got to say, okay, meet up location and time. Meet up time is at, let's say, 7.30. 7.45. 7.30, 7 7.45. Kick stand up at 7.45. Because you know they're going to be that late person. Right. You know there's going to be a late person there. So with that in mind... One of the things you definitely want to put in there also is what to expect on this ride. Now, you already described where you was going, mm -hmm. what to expect, the road condition. Road we even condition. put the weather forecast that we expecting on that ride, For that ride Dave. in the email. Yes. yes. And the next thing we put in there is, like we said, like she said earlier, direction. We try to get, if there's... If we're talking about Yosemite, there's more than one way to get in Yosemite. Mm -hmm. But for most places that we go, there's more than one way to get there. Now, we're talking about a highly technical, twisty road. We put two different directions in there. For those that want to take the easier route, the easy route. or the quickest right. route, I would say. Yes. And then we put the number one, which the normal one that we ride, is the twisty route to get to that location. That way you're giving people an option. You're giving them an option if they want to come to the meetup location or and do a, the second route number two, or if they just want to meet us there, because, you know, like we're talking about fellowship camaraderie on group rides. You don't want to leave anybody out. Exactly. Now, one of the things I said I was going to discuss in that, no matter of fact, let me stay with direction for a second. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, with the meetup location, usually put your meetup locations at a gas station. Right. For those that come with a half tank, or light almost on <laughs> that need gas so that yes. way you're at a gas station they can pull up to the pump fill up and then we're ready to go exactly so now with the direction here's what we do we just go with the basic simple thing this is not planning a, a long road trip this is mm -hmm. basically going on a one day trip in and out so we just use basic google map and we put a picture of each direction that we're going in there with a link so they can click on that link and see it for themselves and they can determine the mileage. We also put the mileage, expected time arrival of our destination based on Google Map. Right. All that is in the email. And then we also put mileage and route is for reference only. So make sure you put that in there because somebody gonna say, well, we're not going this way. You're not going the way that, that, that is it. For reference only exactly. is subject to change. You got to put that in email because I guarantee somebody who really want to ride or those people that just complain is will say something about it. Right. That way they have an opportunity. The next day, you got to put this in your email because we have lost people on several rides. Tell your riders to put the directions and the address in a GPS. Right. You put it in a GPS just in case they get separated, they are ready to go and they can meet you at the location. Right. So, um, something you were about to say? Yeah, I was about to say, we don't print out the paper the form. Paper form no. of it. So if you have GPS, you have a phone or whatever it is, you make sure you tell them to put that address in their phone. So that way, if they do get lost or fall back or whatever may happen, they'll be able to punch it up and catch up with us. Yes. Oh. One thing I want to add, and I was just talking about Yosemite. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talking about restaurants, we do the exact same thing. You boost that restaurant, you talk about the roll, you talk about right. the, the, the smoothies of the payment and all that. This is still the email. We haven't got to the day where we actually got on the ride. Mm -hmm. You put all that in there, and especially when the restaurant, we put a lot of food pictures in, you know, somebody getting hungry, put a lot of food pictures 
in the email. Exactly. And we also put the link that they could click on, go directly to the West restaurant website menu page. So they already know the prices they're going to pay and they can already have an idea of what they may order. Wow. That's just something that we do. Now, if you think that's too much, take it out. You know, just we just kind of trying to get you to, to get a point to where you you ready to do these group rides and, and I'm put, putting all this in there. Now, obviously, this video is going to be longer than it takes you to plan that group ride. Just go step by step yep. and make sure you cover every single thing. And let me back up something again. And when we do a pre-ride, we're also looking for gas stations. Yes. How far apart are the yes. gas stations for the bikes that may need to refill before we get there? So that way. They won't say, oh, we go on this ride, where's the next gas station, you know, so they'll know where the next gas station yeah. is. Um, and, and I may miss some stuff that we put in the, to, in the yeah. emails, but now here comes the, the win. You, you, you got people reading that and you got them all excited and they're going, win, 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 win. This is why we put it at the bottom. Because we have received emails where Kick and I was planning on just doing something different. And they sent us the email, they say, hey, we got this ride going to this location on this date and we already said no we can't go because we're busy on that date right and we have gotten emails that structure just like ours where they say hey beautiful crystal clear lakes dipping in the water lake towel and we get excited okay when we going to lake towel you look at the bottom there's the date and we may change our plans that's what you want the people to do you don't want people to just throw their plans out you know no if you if you if you about to have a kid that's being born you want people to think Oh, I could go on this ride first, then go back to the hospital while my kid, while the kid being born. Okay, you, I'm playing. Y'all hear him, right? I'm okay, don't y'all follow that. I'm playing. Don't so, follow that. In the email, like I said, we put another day. We put the type of road it is. We always say this. This you must. I, I say if you forget anything we said, put this in your email. This is an advanced. Now, I'm telling you the difference where we go. Advanced road is for skillful riders. Right. Then you're talking about technical. That means you're just a little bit above advanced. We take this is advanced slash technical road. So if, I think I can get the exact words. So if you're uncomfortable with riding mountains, twisties, switchbacks, no guardrails, huge drop-offs, you might want to opt out of this ride. That way you give everybody an opportunity. This is what we were talking mm -hmm. about. Instead of doing two separate emails, we do one email and send it out to everybody. So those beginner riders who are uncomfortable with those things, they can opt out of that. And they can pick up on the next ride that you're planning. Exactly. Okay. Or take the much lesser the route, route. the second route. Yeah. So that's just the email proportion of it, which brings us to the next part of the, of the uh, ride planning. Email is out. Everything is set. And we don't, once we finish the email, we give it a couple of days just in case we think of something else and put it in there. We don't send it out immediately right. unless the ride is that weekend. Yes. So I was getting ready to say the roads, so how did you say, technical roads? Mm -hmm. We get it from motorcycles.com. Well, different location. Uh, what I would describe as a technical road is through my experience. Mm -hmm. And then I would look up any road on motorcycleroads.com. That's my number one go-to. Then I look right. at different things and say, okay, how do they classify this particular road that we're going on? And if it's like the number one twisted, highly technical road, then we let everybody know, hey, motorcycleroad.com, say this, this, and that. If we've been on the road before, we'll say... If you've ridden with us on this road, that road, and this road, right. you should not have a problem right. riding this road. Right. Because some people who have been on, on twisted roads with us, they kind of get nervous, like, wow, that's hard. And then we get another twisted road that's not even hard as the last one they've they been okay. on. So we're reminding them, if you rode this road, that road, and this road, you should not have a problem riding right. this particular road. And we love twisted. I mean, California, you're less than an hour away from any spectacular motorcycle road. Mm -hmm. I mean, anyone. Water so, or mountains, pick one. So now, which brings us to the day of the ride, the meetup location. Right. You know, we, we like to do, the first thing we like to do when we get there is what? We arrive early. Yes. So that we can greet the riders that's coming in and maybe even video them coming in. Yes, which because is excellent. We like to put it in our video. Yeah, and, I, and, and we always tell her, and I was telling her, and she tell me, when you, especially YouTubers, when you start record, record with intent. Record, say, okay, this is going in my final video. Even though right. it may not make it, record with intent. Don't just press the button and let it flop all over the place. Okay, <laughs> I'm not, I have nothing to do with ride planning or the day of the ride, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Yeah. 
I just say we like to greet the riders. We greet when they the coming riders. in. And then we also we mingle with the riders. Yes. We don't just oh hey. No, we're gonna go and have a conversation with them, especially if we have not met this rider or written with that rider previously. We go and we introduce ourselves and we ask questions about them. Because how are you gonna know about someone if you don't ask questions? All right. I mean we don't try to embarrass somebody like, no. hey, you sure you wanna go on this ride? But sometimes we have to. We went on a ride where two riders dropped their bike, but in a briefing, I talked to them about the type of road right. it was going to be, and they was good with it, and but they dropped their bike, so it wasn't a big deal. Now, during that meetup day, some of the things you want to cover, uh, uh, we was going to do a video from the ride where, you know, we saw a meetup, and it was a horrible plan, and right? We, yeah, might, we might do that one we'll also. Do a, we'll, yeah, we're going to do a video. We're going to make but, not on this one. We're but we do, do a video. pre ride brief. Let's go on with the brief. We got first aid kits on the bike. Next thing, if we just happen to have an unfortunate, unscheduled this one. And our pre ride brief is pretty detailed mm -hmm. and extensive. It don't have to be long, but there's a lot of things that you should be putting in there. And if you're watching this and you're new, right, new to riding group, if they don't have a pre-ride brief, this is one you might want to walk away from. Right. And just say, hey, something came up, I got to go. It's all about your safety. And when our pre-ride brief is, there's a lot about safety. So here's what we do in our pre-ride briefing. What you want to cover in your pre-ride brief is basically the things that you put in your email. Right. And you want to just keep that energy going. Let everybody know you do a welcome. Hey, welcome to the... Thank you for coming out. We're going to have a great day. And you just kind of describe what you've done in your email, mm -hmm. right? Which is one you talked about the destination. Now they're hearing it verbally. Yes. They still saw the, they, they saw the email. They saw the photograph. Now they're hearing it. I like that. They're hearing it verbally. <laughs> <laughs> and you are bringing that same excitement that you had in the email to this thing. Now, you're not watching for the the fate everybody getting excited, you just bring it to them. Some people show excitement in different ways. So you talk about the destination, you talk about it just like you talk about the email. Hey, we got perfect weather today, you this and that, we're gonna do this, we got a many riders. And, and another thing we like to do at our briefing is the introduction. Right. Sometimes she'll grab the camera and do what? I start interviewing people. Don. Monica. Monica. Cindy. Cindy. Jason. What, not Big Daddy? Mm -hmm. What's your name? What are you riding? Blah, blah, blah. And if we see a stranger, we ask them, well, how did you find out about the ride? Right. We welcome them and say, did you get the email or did the person invite you? Did, did you read the email? If they say yes, then obviously they're comfortable going on the type of ride that you are planning. Mm -hmm. Another thing we discuss is basically the route. You just got to go over that route again just to make sure that people are comfortable of doing what you're doing. You're riding straight. No big deal. If they got a bike, they just probably good with riding straight. Now we go over that route, we talk about things uh, that's gonna come up on the route. If we've been there before, we talk about what you're going to see or what you expected to see. I can say what you're gonna see because it right. may change. Uh, yep. We talk about ride formations. And we go over, if, we, if you see one of us doing this, in and out the formation, we talk about why are we doing that. And that's basically when we come in by big rig trucks. Absolutely. You know, you want to just get over just in case that tread fly off. The further it goes, the less it's going to have an impact on you. Uh, we talk about things like that. We go, uh, you know what we're going to do? We record all our ride briefings, but the next time we do a group ride, we're going to bring you the entire, we're going to try to record and bring the entire briefing to you guys so you can see exactly what we talk about in our pre-ride brief. Because you see us talking, but we don't do the whole brief because we normally our videos want to get you to the ride. So we want to have you to have the <laughs> best viewing experience of the ride that we had. Right. And sometimes the briefing is not it. But this is about you planning your ride. So hopefully you'll watch the entire brief when we do the pre-ride brief. So you talked about the formation, mm -hmm. um, the route. We come to a four-way stop sign. When we come to a four-way stop sign. <laughs> 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 when we come to a four-way stop sign and there are cars already there, let them go so that the group can stay together. Yes. Now, you know, you don't want a car to turn in front of you or 
anything like that. But once we start moving, everybody start moving together because there's no more cars there. So we can stay together. Yes. For your, those of you who ride with us often, you know exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. That's why we let, I kick say, that's why we let cars pass. And then when I do this, that means all of us going at the same time. And some riders, some car drivers are nice. They'll let you go. If they decide to go in front of you, big deal. It's all about safety. We don't want to get anybody hurt. you can't hurting. win with a car. Not at let all. Let it go. Not at all. Let and and go. believe it or not, these are the things that we talk about in our ride brief. Then we talk about communications. More than anything, you want to put communication in there. Uh, cake normally cover all the hand sign, the basic yeah. hand sign that we're going to use. The signals. Yes. You know, left turn. Right, stop. Police, anything. Police. What are we going to change different directions? Uh, what are we going to get in one line, line or two lines? Oh, matter of fact, let's talk about that. <laughs> the thing that's important, if, if when we plan a ride, nine out of ten rides that we plan, we leave. Now, we also get people say, hey, they want to go here. I say, hey, if you've got a location you want to go, let me know. I'll plan it, and they can lead it. That's not a right. problem. Like, right. like I said, yeah, this video is fun. not about road captains. This is just about organizing, leading, planning a ride. But when I send a signal back, if you're in a line, send it all the way back. All the way back. All the you way back. You hold up that one that means single file. Everybody send should be holding back. up the single file. Single file. Now. So now, but some of them have CB radio for as communicating to communication go. I don't have a CB on my on my bike. So I communicate with Rich because I'm normally the tail gunner anyway. So when he says something right turn, okay, then we're about to make a right turn. Or somebody on the CV has communicated something to them, then he'll relay it back to me. And that's how I communicate with all the bikers. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. Because this, this, this one I just want to put out there because it happened more often than not. What's that? When the ride leader... This is about riding with a group partner. Right? I'm gonna get back to our, our <laughs> schedule. But when a ride leader decide to change lanes, do not start moving over immediately. Cause you don't know, if you're looking at the blinker, he could have hit it by mistake. I don't know how that can happen, but wait till he go over first, then follow through. Because what normally happens, she have to secure the lane for me, or if she leading, I'm telling her, I secure that lane first. Right. But once I secure that lane, I'm going to say, okay, lane secure, which means that last car is probably passing her, and then we can come over. But if you start going over the minute you see her light, that car probably hadn't passed yet, and you're going to hit. Anyway, I know that's a yeah. safety thing. But we talk about those things also at the briefing. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I put that on camera because that's a safety, a major, major safety issue. Now, another thing that I want to, I want to spread this out through the entire country or the entire world because – we use lights also, right. our headlights and for signal. And when we get to our safety brief, I always say if you have to pull over for any reason, flash your lights. The high beams and low beams start flashing, like when uh, we were riding with the Can-Am with Jeff. <laughs> and his lights are flashing. flashing. So he thought. So I say, Cake, Jeff light flashing, let me, let me make sure. And then I saw the light flashing again. I said, well, something's wrong, let me pull over. So I relayed it back to her, make sure it was clear. We pulled over. And obviously when you pull over, you want to do it where it's safe to do so. so right. And get off on the right side of your bike so you won't stumble out in the street just in case you stumble. And she pulled up next to Jeff, which he was in right in front of you, right? Yeah, he was right in she front of you. She pulled up next to Jeff to make sure everything was okay. Jeff was like, what? My, my light's not flashing. <laughs> it was the what road. What happened was the road was like this. Yes. So his can am was bouncing. And it made it look like the lights were flashing because yes. it was going in and out, in and out. Yes. I can see that. Yes. So <laughs> it, it was good. It just shows it works. Right. So if you had to pull over for any reason, start it from the back. Light flashing, so anyway, it comes mean, all the way up. If you yeah. ride and watching your mirror, if you see the last person flashing, like let's say the tail gun, I mean, I need to pull over. And then you should bring it all the way up just in case the lead is around the corner. He didn't see what was going on. Right. And by the time the light flashing, he said, okay, something's wrong. Let's pull over. Just, I'm just saying, do it the you way know, you it, guys normally it, do it. It happened once before, but one of the guys that was in front saw the lights blinking, and he had a CB, and he communicated to Rich that the lights was, somebody was flashing yes, the lights yeah. behind him. Yeah. I can't see the flashing lights because I'm the tail gunner. 
So once the rich sale, somebody lights blinking, somebody flashing their lights, then we can pull over, take care of the situation, and get back on on our route. Exactly. So in in your ride briefing, you should be explaining this to all your participants, all your riders. Correct. So one of the other things that we really cover. I'm say, go ahead. By no means that we use our horns. Oh no, no. The gold wings have car horns and they, they are loud. loud. They're very loud. They will start them. We have some of the wings that have air horns yes. on their bike. Sound like a train. Womp, womp. You don't want that horn blowing and scaring somebody. Yes. That's enough to whoa, whoa, you know. Yeah. You don't want that. So we we try our best to stay off the horns. We make sure we say that in the, the briefing. Yes. Oh, that's one of the main things we do actually cover in the mm -hmm. briefing. And then Next thing we do is we talk about, I mean, we go deep into safety stuff also. We talk about what happens, what happens if you have an unscheduled dismount. Dismount, that's what we call it. We call it unscheduled dismount. Somebody's happened to go down. What are the rules? What is the main thing that we're looking for? The safety and controlling traffic. That's it. The main thing is traffic control. control. Because who's going to watch you? And I say it a lot. If we go, I say this a lot in our, our brief. If we go around the corner, if you're too close, and I go down, who's going to protect you? So when you come around that corner, you hit me. Who's going to protect you? Or if you stop and you're running towards me, and a car come around and nobody worried about controlling traffic, then we are all in trouble. Right. And and for me, it's utmost important that you control that traffic because if I'm down there and I need some first aid, CPR, some assistance, and then you get hit, three of us, three, everybody around to get hit, then possibility of all of us, and let's put it, put it I hope that'll be for real, Paul, possibility of all of us dying increases because nobody exactly. controls the traffic in front or behind. Mm -hmm. Me as the leader, mm -hmm. if, I can, if I go down, then we have a plan. We always put a plan. Hey, number two, you gotta do this. Number the, she know what to do when she's a tail gunner. Right. Tail gunner, you got to do this. You got to do it. And I always carry what on my bike? Cone. I carry cones on my bike. So right. we can just put a cone wedge up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just let drivers know, hey, there's an accident up there. Slow down. People start blowing their horn, acting the fool. Who cares? Exactly. It doesn't bother us. It, it, that's just the way we run with it, just the way we flow with it all the time. So when you're doing your ride briefing, they hardcore on the safety part of it. Okay. Oh, wow. That, I mean, we cover that extensively. And we talk about first aid and CPR. Mm -hmm. We talk about if you certify, <laughs> it doesn't matter if your certification expired. So does your certification expire? Does your experience in CPR expire? That you were already trained? And no, you could do chest compression. And you could do, you know, yeah. Mouth to mouth. <laughs> You can do mouth to mouth. So, so know your also. basic first so. aid in CPR. And we always ask who has a first aid kit. We want to see hands. Yes. And then, then we will place people in strategic locations. Because if everybody who have a first aid kit is in the front and somebody in front go down, people in the back kind of law, like, what am I supposed to do? So we actually guide people, hey, I want you to do this if this happened. I want you to do this if this happened. Right. You need to take a deep breath. Calm down. And everybody is dialing 911. Exactly. We want everybody, everybody dialing. dialing. We want cars passing down 911, letting dial them know there's an accident. And let them know, and that way, then all of the 911 operator could say is, "We got a call on that. Someone is coming." All right. Now yes. you know, so now you, your calmness can go back to leveling down. Yes. To level three. Now, this one thing that we don't tell people. But we're going to talk about it since we're doing this video. Mm -hmm. Is at a meeting about play when people bikes coming and we we doing a mingling and all that and we bending down mm -hmm. pretending we picking us up on the oh, ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we are doing <laughs> are bike inspections. Right. <laughs> the people riding with us know now we are doing bike inspection. Now we're not going around your bike like you should be doing. We're not doing T clocks and all stuff that you should be doing. What we're checking are your tires that we That's can see. We ain't it. telling you come roll your bike so we can look at your tires. No. The part of the tire that we can see yes. is what we're expecting on your bike. That's exactly so what we're looking at. Threads or bulging, 
You can't come with us. Yes, you might want to sit this one out. You want, you know, you may not have done your teeth clocks that day, or maybe that part was up at the top and you didn't see it because who it happened to one time? You. You no, no, it happened to me. We didn't. We wasn't on the road. Yeah, we was yeah. on the road riding we when were. it happened to you. Yeah, you shouldn't have been a, on that ride. I didn't. And do Willie a, saw it. A whole tea cloth. You didn't spin I didn't it. Get down. I didn't spin my tire. I looked and saw the part. I said, "Yeah, my tire is good." Mm-hmm. It just so happened we was at the gas station, and Willie said, "Um, yes. <laughs> girlfriend." And then that was it, girlfriend. I'm like, "Oh, I knew it was me." <laughs> We're not riding too much. Yeah. But our destination was like the next five miles. Right, right. That we was going to. And we was able to take the tire off, get a new tire, put it back on, and I continue on my riding. So. Yes. It happened to the best of us. Yeah, okay. I'm just <laughs> saying. I'm just saying. So, you know, we knew this was going to be a, a pretty long video. We just want to bring mm-hmm. all the information we can, even though we may have missed some of the things that we actually do in our okay. ride organization and planning. You about to say something? Yeah, I'm about to say something. The one thing that I almost forgot is we ask the new riders that we're just meeting what's their skill level. Yes. Well, we don't say like oh, skill long, level. Yeah. No, we just ask them how long have you been riding. You know, this is things that we ask them when we're mingling and introducing themselves to the yes. new riders with us. You know, so we know where, where to place them in line. Now, and, and the reason is, and a lot of people may disagree with me on this, if you invite somebody on a ride, you are responsible for their safety, no matter what you think, because if there are lawsuit to be had, there's a lawyer that would take it. Trust us on that one. If you believe mm-hmm. nothing else, trust us on it. We've been through litigation already. We're not going to discuss that in this video. Maybe we'll do it at another time. We talked about it. Well, we had our, another video too. Yeah, we talked about our. Uh, we talked about it before at uh, parking lot practice. We talked about it at our meeting before. We definitely started a video on it. But you are responsible for those people, and there's a way around that also. And we'll let you know that probably in another video. So we're going to wrap this one up right now. Yeah. Anything else you can think of? No. Yeah, we hope you got something out of this video. We hope that you're excited about planning your first group ride. Even if it's a group of four, plan it. Plan it right. And that's going to rub off on people. We didn't have many people say, man, I love the way you guys do this. I love I love this. This is probably the most extensive thing I've ever been to. And they feel comfortable and excited to go on that ride. It's really good. Hey, I like your presentation here. That's really good. Right on. Thank you. All right, Tom so and Start Tom. planning your group ride and then let us know how it turned out, you know. And I'm going to see what I can do about putting that email. Matter of fact, just email us if you want a copy of our email. And you can just use it as a template, change the whole structure. We don't care. And when we send those emails out, it, some of them may not be grammatically correct because we just put our own personality in it. It doesn't matter. But just get it out there and start getting those rides planned together. Get it done. Get it done. Let's do it. Hey, put us on your email list. We might ride to you. You never oh, know. Yeah. We'll come in your area and look you up. But if you like this, make sure you smash that like button. We really appreciate Ding. it. It helps the channel grow. And subscribe. And pass it on. <laughs> Share. Anyway. Ring that notification bell. Anyway, that's all we have for now. So if you're out riding, remember, ride long. Ride hard, ride strong, but most importantly, ride safe. From Boots and Jeans Riders, I'm Rich. I'm Cake. And we are out. Out. Peace. Go plan your ride. Right now. And invite us.